Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm finally back home after more than a month. So after the three tournaments I've played, I went to a festival with, with Lucia and some of my friends. Uh, she was one of the judges there, so I wanted to support her and yeah, I came back. So I'm going to continue covering the games from these three tournaments. Uh, I have to say, it's going to be really hard to show you the next six games. Uh, including this one. Uh, these were from the first tournament, the Silver Lake Open, which is definitely, which was definitely the most discouraging uh, tournament I've played so far. So bear with me, it's going to be very tough watching these games, but hopefully you're going to learn. But the good news is that uh, it went better in the other two tournaments. So it wasn't all bad. Let's start. So in this game, uh, I'm playing an opponent who was a hundred points lower rated than me. And he's actually uh, about 50, maybe 50 something. And I met him last year and he used to be over 2000. Actually, I think last year he was over, over 2000. So he's an, an experienced player. He's not really 1800. Uh, but yeah, that, that's no excuse. And I'd been preparing for his repertoire for a few hours and he ended up surprising me. After I played e4, he played d6. And there are no games in the database where he's played d6, he usually plays the French. Uh, and yeah, I just played d4, hoping for a normal Pirtz. Uh, unfortunately, he went e5. And I cannot describe how much I hate facing this move. So there are basically two options. I can go into this queenless send game, which if I take and takes and queen takes and king takes, uh, I'm going to say is equal because my knight is not on c3 yet. So I can play c3 blocking his knight from coming into these squares. But it's definitely not better for white. And in practical play, black scores really well. Since I wanted to win, I wanted to keep queens on the board, so knight e2 is an option, that's a weird option, I'd considered that briefly. Knight c3 is weird if you want to go bishop e3, queen d2, castles, queen side. So I just went for the principled move knight f3. Now, this I hate even more than the end game. I hate the Philidor. And after this game, since that game, I'd probably spent... 20 hours learning setups against the Philidor because I don't want to go into a Philidor again just knowing the theory and not knowing the plans. Okay, so he took e d4, knight d4, knight f6. This is all the main line of the exchange Philidor, knight c3, bishop e7. And I knew all of this. That's not the problem. I knew the, the theory, but I wasn't feeling comfortable. Okay, bishop c4, castles, castles, c6, still the main move, a4. Now, you can play a5, which I think is fine for black, probably better than what he did in the game. He went for this exchange with knight e4, which is still okay. Takes d5, bishop d3. This is very, very common. Bishop takes e4 and bishop f6. And in this position, uh, there are two moves. Uh, I think there are two main moves. I think I can go knight f5, but I wasn't really sure what to do after that. I also knew I could go bishop e3, but then I wasn't really sure what to do after rook e8. I couldn't remember what the theory was. I think it's queen d3, but I just didn't want to be pinned all over the place. So I ended up playing c3 because I know that in most setups you end up playing c3 anyway. And I wasn't really upset about him isolating my pawn. I mean, if he wants to give up this bishop, that would be amazing. Because usually uh, in positions like this, black has to go g6 to cover h7 and then has to go uh, has to save the bishop to, to guard the dark squares. So if he ever takes, then for example, knight d7, queen h5, and g6. Now these are very weak, and this is probably practically winning for for white. Whether I would win or not is another question. So I went c3. He, of course, did not give up the bishop. He went knight a6. This knight is probably coming into c5, or at least that's what I'd expected. It could also come to c7 and d5, which is sensible. But knight c5 is... Well, knight c5 probably isn't that good. 
at the moment, but there could be ideas of knight c5, knight e6, uh, and gaining a tempo on the bishop instead of going knight c7, knight e6. And I went bishop to e3. Uh, I think instead of bishop e3, I should go queen c2 anyway, uh, immediately, and after g6, then go bishop e3 to just provoke uh, g6 straight away, rook e8, maybe rook f e1. I mean, this should be equal. But g6 is a weakening move, and maybe later on in the game h4, h5 could open things up. But I went bishop e3, which is fine. He went rook e8, and now maybe I should go bishop d3, uh, but I wasn't sure. I didn't want to allow knight c5 with tempo. The, the thing is, in these setups, you have to choose whether you want to have your queen on d3 and bishop on c2, or queen on c2 and bishop on d3. I think both are okay. I went bishop c2. Knight c7, uh, queen d3 now, provoking g6, and rook a to d1. Rook a to d1 may be a weird move, uh, but what I wanted to achieve with this move was I, I wanted to meet knight to, uh, to d5 with bishop to c1 without blocking in my a1 uh, rook. So I think that was still okay. And here uh, he surprised me, he played c5, and... I thought about knight b5, and I'm going to show you what I was thinking about, and I'm going to show you why it's interesting. But I couldn't quite figure out how to get an advantage or how to win material forcibly. So if I go knight b5, he's forced to trade queens, because if he doesn't, if he moves the queen away, then I take on c5, probably, and should be better. Uh, he could play queen e7, but then I think I just go rook e1. And again, should be better. So queen takes d3, bishop takes d3, and now again he is forced to trade knights, because if he moves his knight away, if for example knight e6, then I go bishop c4 and knight c7, either win the exchange or the c5 pawn. So knight takes b5, uh, and yeah, bishop takes b5 with tempo on the rook, attacking c5, attacking the rook, and his only move is rook e5. And here I thought, okay, maybe bishop f4, but he has rook e4, and maybe bishop g3, maybe now he plays c4, I wasn't sure about this, I mean, maybe my bishop is trapped, what do I do, I would probably have to play bishop to d7. And even though this is okay, he's going to play rook e2, and then I could be in trouble, because if this pawn falls, I lose the game. So I played knight f3. Okay, uh, has to trade queens again, uh, because I win the c5 pawn otherwise. Bishop takes d3 and b6. And here is my first actual blunder of the game. Uh, I had a winning move here, uh, and I'm ashamed to say that I hadn't even considered it. The idea behind uh, this move, bishop f4, is that I'm restraining his rook from going to b8, and if I can never play bishop to e4, then I just win. Uh, or bishop to b5 and then attacking the other rook. So he has to play knight e6. And now I go bishop to b5. Okay. And the only move to keep him in the game, which this is my analysis after the game, also assisted by the engine after the game, uh, the only move to keep him in the game is bishop to a6, trading bishops. But it should still be much better for me. Bishop takes... Knight takes f4 and rook to d7. I mean, this is overwhelming. My position is just really good. This pawn is about to drop, so he cannot challenge me on the d-file. So, for example, if, if here, then here. And he cannot trade because this rook is tied down to the pawn. And after bishop b5, if he plays a normal move like rook d8, then I just win outright. So, takes, bishop takes, and bishop c6, and it's game over. But unfortunately, I didn't see bishop f4. Uh, I thought the knight is going to go to e6 anyway, so I force it there. I also thought... Well, yeah, okay. I played bishop to c4, which isn't a good move. Uh, I thought it was going to give me something, but it didn't give me anything. Bishop e6, now I'm forced to trade. Bishop takes, knight takes, rook d7, rook e d8, rook f d1. Knight f8, we exchanged everything. Takes, bishop takes. And now uh, comes the reason why I'm ashamed of this game. So this endgame is perfectly equal. The reason why it's perfectly equal is because neither side can really make too much progress. 
Uh, however, I do have one small edge. My small edge is that my king could come in here. And if he ever moves uh, these pawns, then they become weaker, especially the b6 pawn becomes weaker. Another very important thing in this position uh, is whether the knights, uh, whether his knight could, for example, do this. Okay, and then come into the center of the board. This I'd completely neglected. This coming in with my king, I'd completely neglected. I went for an idea which is insanely stupid. Uh, I should be slightly, slightly, slightly better. After my next move, it's completely equal, but black has much greater practical chances. I played the move c4, and here, here, here are two reasons why the move is bad. Three reasons why the move is bad. Firstly, most importantly, my king cannot come in. Secondly, once his knight comes to c6, these two squares are just free for the taking. Okay, and thirdly, uh, yeah, and thirdly, I'd made uh, my pawn structure inflexible, way more inflexible, never giving myself the b4 break. So c4, and I had enough time on the clock, I had more than an hour. c4 is an inexplicable mistake from which I hope to learn a lot. So try to learn from this. This is just insanely stupid. Okay, he plays bishop c7, uh, preventing knight e5. Instead of c4, uh, I had a normal move like king f1, which is great. I also could play knight e5 straight away, and if bishop to c7, I go knight c6, provoking a weakness, a6, now knight e7, check, coming back to the center, and knight d5. And if his bishop has to stay on d8, then I'm better, and probably I can just go a5 here. There is no defense to the pawn, so if he takes... This is, of course, much better for me. So knight e5 straight away was probably very good, but yeah, okay, I played c4. Bishop c7, king f1, pawn f6, preventing knight e5 again, king e2, and enabling king f7, king to d3, knight to d7, h3, h5, b3, king e6, bishop to d2. I wanted to challenge the e5 square, so I wanted to go bishop to c3. And here he played g5, and I think, okay, my next move is not too bad, but it made the game much harder to play, and actually practically very hard for white to hold. Again, I don't know what to say. I think I have underestimated my opponent. I played too confidently, I played too quickly, and I played bad moves. Had my opponent been higher rated than me, I think I would have played better. That's usually what happens in my games. When I play somebody lower rated, I tend to think less, have more uh, confidence, which is completely unjustified. For some reason, I tend to play worse. So what I should do here is accept the fact that the game is probably drawn. I mean, it is a draw. And just play g4. And after a g, a g... I mean, his knight is coming to c6, that's fine. I go king e4, knight c6, bishop c3, maybe bishop e5, and we trade everything off. And this is a draw. It's, it's just a draw. He has two tempi, I have one. Uh, but instead of that, I played bishop c3, trying to play, to keep some chances in the game. And he played g4, we exchanged. Unfortunately, I kept chances for him. Knight d2, bishop e5. Uh, the thing is here, whoever uh, remains with, with the knight in this position is going to win. So I never want to give him the option to capture my knight because all of my pawns are on light squares. I could just target these and maybe win. Okay, knight f1, bishop takes c3, king takes c3, f5, a good move king to d3, and now the suffering starts. His knight is better than mine, his pawns are more advanced than mine, his king is better than mine, I'm just worse. The engine says, let, let me tell you exactly, minus 0 0.2, but in reality, I think it's better for black because it's very hard to find moves for white and to create a fortress for white. 
Okay, king e3. Knight b8, the knight comes to c6, knight to d2, f4 check, king to d3, knight to c6. And now, as you can see, my knight is tied down. Uh, once the knight gets to d4, so I need to waste the tempo, knight f1, knight d4, knight back to d2. Okay, uh, and I'm not in Zugzwang, but if I don't uh, cover e4 and defend b3, I lose. If the king comes to e4, I lose. If knight takes b3, I lose. So I had to play knight f1. He played knight f5 here. I played knight f1 again, not to relinquish control over e4 and to be able to meet knight d4 with knight d2 a5 and here i found a good way to simplify the position i actually spent i think 30 20 to 30 minutes here thinking about my next move and thinking about the consequences and actually was begging for a draw i actually asked for a draw at one point maybe after my next move because i concluded that the, the position is drawn maybe bef maybe after knight f1 but i think after after my next move so i played g3 which seems unreasonable but it's actually a good move i think well i'd actually analyzed everything and it should be a draw i don't think there's any way for black to win firstly if he plays f3 then he has nothing this is maybe even better for white now because i could come in here but he shouldn't let me if he lets me i win if he doesn't let me it's a draw uh, and after g3 if he takes then i take f takes g3 and now my knight is able to cover both pawns so for example uh, king to d6 king to e4 coming in knight to d4 knight to d2 knight to e2 knight to f1 it's going to be a draw but yeah at least it's a draw after g3 he played knight d4 I took on f4, uh, king takes f4, this is what I've been calculating, and again, I had to trade, but now, again, my knight on d2 is able to cover both of these squares, and my king still covers e4, and my knight still covers e4, so it should still be okay. One thing I should mention is that if he ever plays g3, then it's a draw immediately. Pawns on the same side of the board, both knights could, could defend. He played knight f3, though. And again, I, I had to calculate. There are two options. I'd almost played knight uh, king to e2. And if knight d2, king e2, this is a draw after king f3, king e1. But it seems visually unpleasant. I mean, it should be a draw after king e4, king e2. But still, uh, I thought I had an easier game after knight to b1. And the idea of knight b1 is he is in Zugzwang. He has to make one of his pieces worse. Uh, if he ever plays knight e5 check, then I go king e2 and his knight is going to have a much harder time coming to d4. So knight e5, even though it seems tempting, is actually a bad move. He played a good move here, knight d4. And again, I have to play knight to d2. And here, uh, this is what I had to calculate before, actually before playing g takes f4. Uh, and I calculated the pattern a bit earlier, but... After, before gf4, I had to calculate it exactly. And the calculation involved this move, knight takes b3. It seems very scary. Knight takes b3, king f3, uh, but it's a draw. Knight d2, king takes f2, and now knight e4 check, king f3, knight g5 check, king f4, knight e6 check king f3 and we just repeat knight g5 if he ever plays king g3 then i just win after king e3 so now th this is winning so after knight d2 he couldn't sacrifice he told me after the game that he was thinking about it but he also concluded that there was no win there so he played knight c6 i played king e2 everything is covered uh knight e5 which yeah, I mean, knight e5 is not good. The knight is much better on d4, but still there's no way to make progress. I just wait, knight b1. Knight f3, he comes in. King to d3, I just wait. Knight e5, king e2. And here uh, he offered the draw and, and we agreed to a draw. I have to say this endgame required a ton of energy. I managed to draw, uh, which I was lucky to do because it was much better for him practically. Yeah, not, not a good game. I mean, I think I played the end game well, uh, but I shouldn't have gotten into this position. Uh, I didn't find bishop f4, and I played c4. 
and those two moves are just there is no excuse for that i have to learn from them a lot those were just dreadful moves okay thank you for watching guys uh next game coming up tomorrow there are going to be daily uploads uh for 30 days now because i'm back home uh and i'm playing my next tournament in two weeks until then i'm going to record all the games from the previous three tournaments so that i can keep uploading them as i play thank you for watching guys uh see you later bye bye